Good day, everyone, and welcome to the XBRL Newcomer and XBRL 26 Preview Webinar. I'm Dave Nishman, Director of Communications and Marketing for XBRL International. This is something new for us. This is usually only offered on the first day of the conference, but we hope that by attending online, you'll be able to be better prepared and able to make better use of your time while at the conference. For those who are interested, this session will be offered live on the first day of the conference as well. Today, you'll get a sense of XII's overall mission, learn some basics about XBRL, and everything you need to know about maximizing your conference experience. While at the conference, be sure to take advantage of the opportunity to interact directly with the staff to learn more about participating in XBRL. Tony Fragnito, our CEO, Cheryl Neal, our conference manager, Angela Rose, our technical program manager, and myself. Now, I'd like to introduce Eric E. Cohen, XBRL Global Technical Leader at PwC and one of the founders of XBRL, who will take you through today's program. Thank you, Dave, and welcome newcomers uh, to the XBRL 26 conference, not the 26th year of XBRL, but the 26th international conference. Uh, those of you, uh, we hope we'll see many of you that are new at the training sessions that will happen the m Sunday and Monday uh, before the conference starts. And then uh, others, we look forward to meeting you when the conference begins in earnest. But whether you're going to be coming to the, the training or coming to the sessions, you're going to be hearing some terms. Uh, you're going to see people at work, and we would like to help equip you. Don't worry, there's no short quiz next period. Uh, and many people uh, will hear these terms, and uh, it, it's not a problem if you don't get them all. Uh, but with repetition comes learning, and so terms like taxonomies and instance documents and link bases and things, these are the things you're going to be hearing about. We wanted to give you a little bit of a foundation for that. As Dave said, XBRAIL has been around for a while. Uh, the, the goal, as I like to put it, is so that a piece of business information, once it enters anywhere in the business reporting supply chain, coming in from uh, an organization's trading partners, being used internally by its management accountants, internal auditors, management, as it's prepared to be shared with folks on the outside, such as financial publishers, data aggregators, investors, banks, regulators, administrators as external auditors add their value add, and as service vendors and service providers, software vendors and service providers uh, help make this all possible. So a piece of business information, once it enters anywhere throughout the business reporting supply chain, never has to be entered more than once. And so XBRL has been bringing together the people with that interest in business operations, internal business reporting, external business reporting, investment, lending, regulation, and economic policy making. We do that by bringing together, first of all, our consortium, XBRL, the global uh, group that Dave already spoke about, people coming together to agree to agree on how to exchange business information. Then they come together and use the, uh, develop the XBRL specification and its modular extensions, the set of rules for how we're going to create something called taxonomies and the business data, instance documents, and the things na needed to make these processes go better. Very familiar is the area of XBRL financial reporting, whether it is the financial statements being submitted to the U.S. Security and Exchange Commission or other financial reporting regulators, stock exchanges, and others around the world. But more than financial reporting, as Dave said, it is uh, banks, it is sustainability, it is corporate responsibilities, risk controls, compliance reporting, optional reporting, any time that we need to take information and bring it together, prepare it, and share it more readily. Now, as we move, as I said, to that world of being able to share information from first transaction or business event to the end report, we also have something called the XBRIL Global Ledger Framework. This is the XBRIL for the detailed data representing ERP qualitative and quantitative information. So the one global ledger, the many taxonomies for financial and other reporting come together to represent, integrate, join up and bring together the business reporting supply chain. To make all this happen, we've got working groups. As I mentioned, there is a base specification. And so under a group called the Standards Board, the folks who oversee the development of XBRL's recommendations, we have groups developing that base specification, keeping it going. 
I mentioned Experials Global Ledger and the GL Working Group, and a series of other groups, the Formula, being able to provide uh, additional and advanced business rules, rendering, being able to take Experial and turn it into to viewable formats, versioning, being able to communicate as the taxonomies and other things change as time goes along, comparability, helping out as we do what uh, people need to do in the marketplace, even if the taxonomies, the reports aren't exactly the same. Abstract modeling, being able to represent the information in XBRL in, in other things other than the XBRL specification. The API task force, making it easier to work with XBRL. We also have a group coming together for best practices, moving to implementation issues beyond our, our base recommendations, project listings, taxonomy architectures, the Taxonomy Recognition Task Force. Many of these groups will have meetings during the conference week, and so if you're going to be there for the training or be there in the time, you're invited to take part in many of those. On Monday, the Best Practices Group, the Rendering Group, the Experial Standards Board, Rendering, M Member Development, Comparability, Taxonomy Advisory, uh, Architecture, and Formula. We'll all be having open meetings on Monday that you're welcome to come and attend. There will also be some other meetings going on uh, that depending on who's listening, you may be invited to those, but those are closed meetings. Now, as I said, there are training courses that also appear on the Sunday, Monday. So these working group meetings uh, will be uh, concurrent with those. Uh, training course one uh, about business and IT worlds that will be continuing on Monday. And course three, the prepare training on inline XBRL and uh, the efforts in, in, in the UK and Ireland. Those will be running against these sessions. But if you're not in those, you may want to come and see how XBRL works. Tuesday will be the XBRL GL working group, and please feel free to get in touch with me or the chair, Gianluca Garbolato, at XBRL GL at XBRL.org if you'd like to take part in that session. Now, along with the standards coming together under the Standards Board and the implementation of best practices under the Best Practices Board, there's a, an Assurance Committee, an International Conference Committee, the Membership Development Committee, as I've already said, and we're always looking for people who want to take part in that mission of XBRL. So you've heard about the, the mission. Let's talk about the terminology. You're going to be hearing some words. I've already thrown a little bit, uh, some of those words at you, Best Practice Board, XBRL Standards Board, Taxonomy, Instance. Let's go into some of those in a little bit more detail. If you're a technical person, uh, you may have a leg up because XBRL is based on something called XML, the Extensible Markup Language. XML is a uh, great recommendation from the World Wide Web Consortium that helped overcome a number of limitations in other formats that people were using to exchange business information and other types of information over time, whether it was traditional EDI, comma-separated format, or other delimited files. XBRL, excuse me, XML began to overcome and provide a great way to build new languages. Uh, when it comes to business reporting, some of the things that XML brought together was an agreement on numbers, date formats, uh, decimals and thousand separators, things that would separate, say, uh, someone in the United States and someone in Belgium or Germany from being able to exchange basic information, numbers and dates, very important in business information. So XML was a very key digital representation uh, that would span goals, uh, the thing called the CSV, comma separated value file. Uh, it's called CSV for the commas in the United States, but in most of continental Europe where the comma is the thousand separator, they actually use a semicolon for that instead. So if we're trying to have a digital representation that's common around the world, overcoming numeric format differences, and even dealing with things like date formats, languages, and other things, XML was a great start. But it didn't bring full agreement to everything, in particular business meaning and semantics. So XBRL began to build on XML to, to standardize the semantics, the, the business meaning that's common in business reporting, whether it's the end types of reports like financial statements, bank reports, sustainability, or whether it's the underlying ERP data, risk and control data that you'll find in things like GRC XML. XBRL as a specification said, we recognize that as we deal with people around the world, we'll want to be able to express different types of concepts, but express it in a language that's common to, to the, the people we're reading it. And so XBRL added the ability to capture 
human readable labels for documentation, definition, disclosure, and just the basic captions that would accompany business fact, and to be able to do it in all of the languages capturable uh, in ISO standards. In business reports, you have uh, represent, uh, recommended order, or at least common order, how things are in a, an order and hierarchy. And so there's presentation that's set up. There are abstract definitions, the ways that things are related to each other, such as similar facts that need to be uh, captured, or generalizations and specializations. And XBRL has ways to capture that. In business reporting, there's authoritative and references and practical guidance, and XBRL formalizes how to do that. Business rules, calculations, and in the business reports as you're trying to figure out who's the organization being reported upon, what are the units of measure, what are the periods of time, what are the business scenarios of the reporting, XBRL formalizes all that. So XBRL formalizes concepts common to business reporting, multidimensional information, flexible, extensible mathematical relationships, presenting it in different ways without having one way set in stone, and additional standardized contextual agreement. And it's all about the X, about extensibility, where appropriate. So two of the most common terms, you've heard me use them already, are taxonomies and instances. Taxonomies and instance documents, these are defined by the XBRL specification 1.0, with further guidance augmented by the modular specifications. The taxonomy is the place where the business reporting concepts are defined. They are formalized. They're put into a place where you can validate that they're being used properly. The taxonomies are vocabulary of agreed upon business concepts. And there's groups around the world who are developing these standardized vocabularies, these dictionaries, these attributes and definitions and interrelationships for every type of fact and interrelationship. And these taxonomies are created using the XBRL specification and its modular extensions. So the taxonomy is the first of our major pieces here, capturing the business reporting terms, definitions, descriptions, and interrelationships. And different authorities, different regions, different groups come together to develop these taxonomies. Now technically, there's one or more XML schema files. They capture the terms and presentation groupings. And then link bases, which are broad-based structures that'll capture these different interrelationships and resources, such as the captions, the definitions, the labels, and the links to references. As I mentioned, don't worry, there is no short quiz next period. This is, uh, if we looked inside the schema of a taxonomy, this is what you might see. Uh, but, but don't worry, as preparers, as analysts, you don't need to view or read these files directly. And as you step on the trade show floor, you're going to see some great tools from the vendors that make this uh, very easy for you to work with. I mentioned the link basis, and again, there's a, a series that are very common as we put together our taxonomies. I mentioned order and indentation and label choices. We've got lots of different labels, and one of the great things about XBRL is that something that may appear in many different places in a printed report. In a typical financial statement, cash appears on a balance sheet, and in a statement of cash flows, and perhaps in the cash note. It need only appear once in an XBRL instance document. But then the different captions you might want to display could be uh, selected using something called the preferred label in the presentation link base. Our calculations lets us bring in weighted summations uh, to be able to check whether things might add up or not. Our definition link base brings in this dimensional constructs, the hypercubes, as it's called in data warehousing, and other relationships, such as the uh, similar tuples and LA assessments and general special. The resources include the labels with the captions and definitions, the authoritative and practical guidance in the reference link base. We'll see link bases in many other uses that are a little bit more advanced, such as the XBRL formula, footnote links, and others. So taxonomies have things for people, like those labels and human readable definitions and pointers to references and presentations for people to look at, and then things for machines, the unique element names and IDs and types of data so that you can make sure that the right type of data has been entered and provided and so that you can guide people in, in what kind of information is necessary. All sorts of instructions for how things relate with additions and subtractions and how they relate to things dimensionally 
and the formulas and other things very specific to uh, business reporting. So the label, reference, presentation, calculation, definition, formula link base, working as part of our taxonomies. Now the X of XML and the X of XBRL is about extensibility by design. Uh, where appropriate, where local regulation implementation call for it, taxonomy concepts, taxonomy resources, taxonomy relationships can be added, prohibited, and changed as appropriate. The standard taxonomies coming together from around the world include many different kinds. As I said, financial reporting is often highlighted, such as US GAAP, used by the US Security and Exchange Commission. Uh, IFRS is used in many other uh, uh, regions. Canadian GAAP now giving way to IFRS, Japanese and German and UK. Statutory filings, uh, very big in the banking arena uh, since two th 2005. The US FDIC and FFIC and all US bank reports, uh, bank call reports. Uh, the Euro filing group working in Basel II and EOPA and the solvency area. Taxation with taxonomies such as HMRC in the UK, and pan-government reporting including tax, such as the standard business reporting taxonomies found in the Netherlands, Australia, and other countries. I've mentioned, of course, internal integration and reporting, being able to represent detail in a standardized fashion using XBRL's global ledger framework. I mentioned sustainability, corporate responsibilities such as the GRIs G3 and G31 the Carbon Disclosure Project, and others. And you'll be seeing and hearing more about these at the conference. So it's about global agreement, people coming together, whether it's the Financial Accounting Standards Board in the US, or the IFRS uh, Foundation with the ISB, or even the Open Compliance and Ethics Group, which is coming together to develop experimental taxonomies for governance, risk, and controls, tracking risks and controls, test of controls, incoming evidence, outgoing reporting. And it's about the important connections that these organizations come and bring together to be able to express information, share information, and make it so that information can flow more readily. It's about the standardized efforts to reduce compliance burden in Australia and in the Netherlands. It's about governments being able to operate uh, more efficiently. XBRL has many potential benefits. So as I said, we've got our taxonomies with our schemas in which our concepts and our presentation relationships begin, our link bases that let us associate labels and bring together order and hierarchy and associate it with the, the references and present and calculate and define. So now that we have these and they come together and they can be de uh, developed at an, in an individual company, they can be developed in an industry, uh, they can be uh, based on, on regions, they can be based on regulators, they can be extended. Uh, we have these now as our starting points based on those taxonomies, those interrelationships, those definitions. Now we have the place where we put business data. Our XBRL instance document is where we take our business data, uh, such as who the organization is and the dates and the numbers and the text. And we say when we are referring to a particular fact, we pull the context from the taxonomy. We say, I am referring to cash and cash equivalents as expressed by, and we pull the cash and cash equivalents code from the taxonomy. So this is where our facts go. Our instance documents are constrained by a taxonomy or taxonomies or extended taxonomies. And they provide contextual information specific to a report, the units of measure, the entity, the period, and more. And this is subject to technical and data validation. So the instance document is the primary holder for organizational data. It's where your data goes. You can find examples online. Uh, many of these are now public, which is uh, the wonderful way where the information can be reused. Again, if you go to uh, expreal.scc.gov, you can uh, see the RSS feeds. Uh, that'll have all the XBRL filings from the US SEC program. Uh, the Chile SVS, the, Isra the Israel Magna system, the J Japan Edinet system, and others make XBRL instance documents available freely online. There's also commercial places where you can access them as well. The GRI has a voluntary filing program and 
a number of organizations have taken their G3 and G31 reports and put them up in their own websites. And there's many other repositories, reporting organization websites, data aggregators, and intermediary sites with information for fee, for free or for a fee. But a lot of it is private just because you put it in this more usable, consumable format doesn't mean you have to share it with anyone. Much of it is internal only or it goes to a specific regulator for compliance purposes. And once again, if we look at the content of an instance document, uh, we'll see a lot of things. You may be able to make out some terms that you, you might expect. But once again, as preparers or analysts, very rarely would you ever have to look inside these files. Some great tools that are going to help you to work with these, uh, these files. You'll see them on the trade show floor. Uh, Expo US uh, has just announced uh, the winner of their, their competition for an analysis tools, so lots of tools, again, for fee and for free, open source and commercial, that will help you work with the data. So inside instance documents, you'll see things that are numeric. You'll see things that aren't numeric. You'll see footnotes, the little things that appear on the bottom of the page with a, a superscript that points to a, a fact or multiple facts. Uh, when you look at numbers, you may see things that are fractions or non-fractions, and fractions will have denominators and numerators, and all these things as the, the factual information will point to units of measure and contextual information. Uh, who is the organization? What is the breakdown of this organization? What is the reporting date? What is the business scenario? The experimental specification lays all this out. The dimensions 1.0 specification extends it uh, with more things for the, the multi-dimensional data. So how do all these pieces fit together? You have an instance document. It will refer off to a schema as a starting point, uh, perhaps the company schema. The company schema may have a series of its link bases. It may then go and refer to a regulator schema. The regular schema may have its link bases, and that may once again refer to another perhaps standard schema uh, and taxonomy such as IFRS. All these come together to work as one whole. So your instance document constrained by the XREL specification and its modular extensions may be further constrained by local regulation such as in the US where filers with the SEC have to comply with the Edgar Filer Manual. And then these are guided by taxonomy developer guidance and best practices to give you one united whole. So the specification is our starting point. Modular extensions add functionality to that specification without modifying the specification, which has now been around for 10 years. But to the XBRL 2.1 specification, we have, as you can see, around two dozen different things that have provided additional guidance to help in the development of what's going on. And it is the input of folks such as those on this call, people who are interested in XBRL, people who are using XBRL, that helps in this process. You can see that we've got a series going from the bottom to the top. We begin with public working drafts. And a public working draft is something that comes out from the working groups. It's something in very initial steps. It's something that uh, we, we like to say publish early and publish often. This lets the world know what we're working on within XPRL and seeks input. So there's drafts that go on within working groups, and then they make those public. And so you can see some things that we'll be talking about later as some of our, our current focuses. From a public working draft, it goes to a candidate recommendation. These are things that are getting ready to be recommended. Uh, from candidate recommendation, it goes to proposed recommendation, where we say that these things are uh, about to uh, become full recommendations and we think that people should be really doing some development around them. Uh, there might be some edits and then finally the recommendations, those are the ones that we say people should use, they should develop for, absolutely we're ready to go. So the XBRL 2.1 specification laying out the syntax and semantics of taxonomies and instances, the dimensional specification which uh, says how you can use part of the context of an instance document to, and then to the taxonomies uh, to build multidimensional information, uh, ways to build tabular, uh, hypercube type stuff. It's great stuff. And again, in our 
a brief session here. I can't speak to it in too much detail. Uh, formulas, the business rules. In line XBRL, I'll speak a little bit more about that later. Of course, XBRL GL that we've spoken about as well. Uh, a big one in the proposed recommendation, uh, just because it's seeing uh, uh, major regulators demand its use, is something called the units registry. Uh, in in XBRL, uh, we've got certain things in units of measure, in particular related to currency, uh, where we use the standard from the International Organization for Standardization, ISO 4217 but other units of measure uh, were not constrained. With the units of registry, we began to build uh, additional agreement around the world on additional units of measure that, that people should consider, strongly consider using, and in some uh, regulatory environments must use as they're doing their reporting, bringing additional comparability. So there's some things that uh, are gaining a lot of interest around the world. And as you come to the session, these are some things that may be of particular interest to you in the development realm. Uh, one of them is called inline XBRL. When XML, upon which XBRL was developed, uh, when X, XML was first came out, it had as its goal the separation between content and context. The, between context and context, which uh, you can do many things with, and the fixed presentation. Uh, when you look at a report, you might say, well, that thing looks like it's going to print better in uh, landscape mode. It looks like the, the font is Helvetica font. It looks like it's a 10-point font. Uh, these are things that are uh, related to, to presentation. Uh, let me extend upon that a little bit more to some of the things that we said earlier about XML. Uh, you look at a number, and you look at the thousand separator. In the United States, it might be a comma. In continental Europe, it might be the, the, the period. In other places, it might be a, a, a space. So uh, decimal points, thousand separators, these are regional, and they're associated with a fixed presentation. Likewise, date formats. So XML was about separating the content and the context, context letting you uh, know what that content is. These are good under any circumstance, and the fixed presentation, which has the regional and functional limitations. And XML said, we're going to separate those. We're going to give you the content and the context. Then you can present it however you want in your regional fashion. So XBRIL began in that, that same way. Uh, XBRIL began with the stripping away the presentation. But then it began to, to bring back some of the things, uh, again, a optional presentation, largely for seeing the taxonomy, and the presentation link base offering a, an order and hierarchy. Uh, but again, we're going to give you the content and context in your instances, but we'll give you this optional presentation guidance in the link basis. But be people began to have additional challenges. They wanted to be able to have a fixed presentation. They wanted to be able to have their report in the way that they wanted to see it. They wanted to make it easier to associate XBRL with a fixed report. They wanted to make it easier to review. And so inline XBRL reintroduced HTML, or a fixed presentation, regional and functional, uh, with a flexible connection between the HTML, what you see, and what it may mean, the XBRL. So in a number of environments, in, inline XBRL has really risen up as a, a, a powerful tool uh, in the UK, and now in Ireland, the tax regulators have been have chosen inline XBRL as the format for their submissions. Many other countries are already using inline XBRL or considering inline XBRL. Uh, for example, uh, in Australia, the audit and accounting profession there has recommended that financial statements uh, become mandatory and be expressed in inline XBRL. So inline XBRL is something that is of great interest. And uh, on Monday, there will be a training class, if you haven't already signed up, uh, which will be talking about inline XBRL and preparation. And then uh, during a number of the other sessions, you'll be hearing about inline XBRL in the technical sessions as they speak about rendering, in the assurance track as they talk about inline XBRL and the assurance ramifications. So a, a great and important topic. And again, I, I've uh, been showing you some what XBRIL looks un underneath. Uh, you can see contextual information. 
you can see units of measure, you can see the facts, and so XPRL was all about the content and the context, and that's great for the machines, but people, they like to see it rendered out. They like to see it in a familiar format. So inline XPRL is one of the ways that they can take what you see and they can embed underneath artifacts that will let you draw XPRL from it. Uh, there are a number of other things that people are doing in rendering as well. Uh, one of those uh, which is gaining a lot of interest is called the table link base. And the table link base establishes standard ways to create views of the concepts to find next real taxonomies to overcome limitations of the presentation link base. Now, it's not a simple arrangement of concepts in a hierarchy. It's going to come up with tables with multiple axes so that you can express things in a, a far more powerful way. So we're in line XBRL, which is what we just spoke about. It starts off with an image, if you will, an HTML document and it then adds XBRL metadata to it, table link bases are going to start off with your data. They're not going to be a fixed presentation to which you add XBRL. It's going to be data, and it's going to define how that, that data should be viewed. Uh, again, emerging as something very, very interesting in a number of, uh, of countries, and again, in the, the technical sessions, you'll hear people talking about the table link base and its great power. And as people are, are working more and more with XBRL, uh, they're finding more and more things to, to work on. Uh, the simple financial report may have been the primary focus uh, as we move to be able to fill that gap from first transaction to end report and not just the financial and accounting information but business information of all kinds. There is a huge amount of information that you may want to be able to, to capture and express. And even if you're not dealing with information at the detailed level, there are some regulatory aggregations that can begin to encompass gigabytes of data. So there was an emerging need of how to cope with very large instance documents. In the list of things that XML uh, was particularly great at, uh, making it so that it was very concise was not an original goal. Uh, they knew that with the uh, increasing spe speed of, of networks and the increasing size of hard drives, uh, they felt in the design of XML itself that uh, ter terseness and conciseness was not important, but we still have to figure out how to cope with large instance documents. And so a, a new, very new work uh, called Streaming Extensions that's come about to say how can we enable efficient stream-based processing. So these are some of the, the hot things that you're going to be seeing at, at the conference. Uh, but again, a lot of great things going on. Uh, whether you go to the plenary sessions, uh, the, uh, the the breakout groups, the tracks, whether you're going to be interested in, in the latest news, uh, whether you have an interest in technology or assurance, uh, non-financial reporting, banking, regulatory, insurance, whatever your interests are, there's going to be some great sessions. Uh, if you go to the conference website at conference.experial.org, You'll be able to see uh, the, the, the current agenda. You'll be able to see the speakers. You'll be able to, to see the current lineup of, of topics. And hopefully some of the things that we've spoken about thus far will help pique your interest. Whatever is going on, uh, we have a goal that someday, uh, again, uh, across languages, across data definitions, across file formats, whatever system you look at expressing business information, in any language uh, that XBRL is going to be able to help overcome the differences, uh, not just of data, but of rules, of business processes, of risks and controls, of the documentation that goes along with it, that someday you'll be able to put on your XBRL colored glasses and underneath the systems, uh, whether it's a, a mapping, uh, not trying to make people change their systems, but be able to make it so that you look underneath and XBRL is going to be able to tie all those systems together. So we look forward to you coming to, to, to this meeting. If you're a member of, of XBRL, a uh, member of a member firm, a direct member, an indirect member, uh, we hope that you can find some of the working groups that you can uh, take part in. Uh, whether or not you're a member, we hope that you'll be able to 
gain efficiencies today by using XPRL in your environment, whether it's commercial, governmental, not-for-profit. Uh, we hope that you can gain the efficiencies of what the developments are today while helping us build the foundation for completely revolutionizing business reporting. Not just data, which is of course important, but being able to standardize the processes, the rules, for the benefits of everyone in the business reporting supply chain. And bringing this together to develop a technical standard for the seamless process of exchange across all information of all types that people need to track and rely upon internationally. So that a piece of business information, once entered into any computer anywhere, never needs to be retyped as it flows through the business reporting supply chain from first transaction or business event on through its direct or derived use. So when it comes to XBRL and you, as I mentioned, we're really lo looking forward to your being there. Uh, we enjoy meeting people who are using this in their environment, but uh, of course there's a special place for those who uh, will become members of, of the organization. Uh, many ways of becoming members uh, as you represent your organization. Uh, there are uh, around a dozen or two different jurisdictions uh, where you can join uh, and be become a jurisdictional member. That way you can take part not just in, in the international effort, in the development of the specifications, the best practices, and everything that's going on, uh, but you can also take part in your local effort uh, so that you can take part in the development of local taxonomies, local marketing, uh, getting experience so that it's used in your environment. So there's jurisdictional membership, and where there's no jurisdiction, XBRL also has a direct membership. Your organization can become a member of XBRL directly. Uh, this is something also that organizations that have a presence in many different countries take part in. So we look forward to people becoming members. They can then become uh, active in the, the working groups on, on a regular basis, although the, the meetings here are open. Uh, there are other meetings and calls that happen uh, in between the conferences, and most of the time those are closed to members only. And there's many other member benefits as well. Uh, XPRL International's got a newsletter, and Dave uh, is always keeping up with what's going on with the latest news, the latest happenings, and so uh, we hope through uh, your being part of this call, if your email address is not known to us, that you'll let us know that so that we can keep you up with the ongoing newsletter. Of course, uh, we hope you're familiar with the website, www.exprial.org, and this is the, the primary face of Exprial to, to the world. Uh, for more of an introduction, if we begin to whet your taste, if you'd like to be even better, be better prepared on the, the terminology and projects of, of Exprial, go to www.exprial.org slash educational dash webinars and the Best Practice Board has been putting together a series of, uh, of short, uh, short and sweet webinars that will help you learn more about XBRL. And from XBRL.org, uh, you'll probably be able to find the website of your particular jurisdiction or region, uh, or hopefully you'll be able to find that in other ways to find out what's going on there, what are their efforts, and how might they be looking for your help, and how can they help you. There's a series of mailing lists. Uh, some of them are available to members only. Uh, some of them are public. Uh, again, uh, we hope that we have your, your email address as part of uh, th this meeting today, as part of coming to the conference, where uh, you can uh, be kept up in touch with what's going on with XBRL. We also have a series of groups uh, in the Yahoo area at groups.yahoo.com, uh, one of them being the XBRL public mailing list at groups.yahoo.com dot com slash group slash xbrl hyphen public and in this way you can take part in uh, a number of different groups in different regions and for different purposes. Uh, XBRL International also has a social media presence on Twitter, on LinkedIn and Facebook and you can get in touch with Dave. You'll see our various email addresses at the end of this uh, where you can find out how you can be kept in touch with everything, and you can communicate with your peers and colleagues. If you are a member within XBRL, there is a, a wiki available, and a number of the working groups use the internal wiki for their, their group. There's also an SVN 
and that's a way that uh, a number of the internal technical files are, are maintained and shared. As I mentioned, there'll be some great sessions at the Xperial conference itself, uh, pre-conference training. I uh, really encourage you, if you uh, one of the things that uh, sometimes uh, frustrates me at the end of a conference is when people said, hey, it's great now that I've learned more about how to work with Xperial, Xperial GL, it would be great if there was some training. And I said, boy, if you were just here Sunday morning, there's some pre-conference training. If you go to the conference site, conference.xperial.org, click uh, on the, the, the conference, you'll see links to the three different training sessions, a great two-day session uh, that'll get you really up to speed on, on Xperial, the technology from a business point of view on Sunday, Xperial GL training, Monday, inline Xperial preparer training. Uh, please uh, reconsider some great stuff there. We've looked at the working group sessions, uh, two of them closed, uh, but the rest open. Uh, many sessions on Monday, Xperial GL on Tuesday, the plenary and the, the symposium uh, on, on Tuesday, uh, where you'll hear some great and important speakers who'll be telling you about uh, the, the past, present, and future of Xperial, and symposia on some special places where Xperial is in use, and then the, the track sessions on Wednesday and Thursday, where you can really dig into the, the topics that are most important to you. There's a conference show floor. Uh, if nothing else, you'll be going there because that's where you're going to find the food. But there's going to be some great vendors there doing demonstrations, great networking. Really encourage you to spend some time on that show floor and hands-on opportunities throughout. The handsome gentleman that you see on the, the right-hand side, Connor O'Kelly, uh, Herm Fisher, Makota Koizumi, uh, look at these people if you want to get involved. Uh, they are the, the leaders of the Experial Standards Board and the Best Practices Group, and they're always looking for, for people who want to step up and say, how can I be involved? So many working groups, and this is a, an opportunity for you to uh, get your hand in uh, and to get working. We'll be uh, making this uh, presentation available. We'll be making the, the slides available. Uh, these are the three sessions that I mentioned uh, that are on the Sunday and Monday. There are links that will take you to the conference uh, website. And again, you can just go there yourself. But another great opportunity for you to really come up to speed is what's called the Xperial Foundation Certification. A lot of people said, how can I develop a really solid foundation in the terminology and technology of Xperial? The, the projects that are going on, why people are using this, and the Xperial Foundation Certification is a, a great intensive training and exam process that will help stakeholders of all levels to understand how using Xperial can meet their business objectives. We're not talking about months here. We're, we're talking about uh, approximately a day uh, of uh, con com computer-based training and then exams in five learning modules that will help you understand different business reporting methods, the business requirements that drove the development of the Xperial specification and its modular extensions, the general architecture, the main component of the specification, and the basics of modeling for taxonomy development. And that last section in particular, I'm working with many different groups around the world who say we need some, some good basics for how do you build taxonomies. Go to xperialcertification.com. Over 100 people are, are, are in this process and on that certification. Find out who's there. Uh, make sure that, that your name is put forward as someone with these types of skills. So with that, uh, I hope this has been helpful for you. I'll look forward to meeting many of you there. As I said, there's no short quiz next period. Uh, what are taxonomies and instances and link bases? I know you'll be finding out more about those at the conference, but we hope that this has helped prepare you uh, just a little bit more uh, and that when you show up, you'll feel a little bit more comfortable that you can go and learn and take part and benefit from the conference. For Dave and Eric, thank you very much, and we look forward to seeing you there.